Bubba joins us here on halftime here for this segment. Uh, Bubba, you want to give another crack at the Florida first baseman's last name from last night? What's up, Hawk? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Doing good. Got to talk to you twice today on uh, the baseball broadcast, too. Kalalau is the first baseman for Florida. That's the one we had to look at the pronunciation guide. Uh, not as bad, not as tough as Gorsica, but uh, definitely one we needed to look at. Uh, and he he drove he drives in the only run for Florida yesterday. And what a performance by the guys last night, Bubba. And I'm really really it's like so. What was more impressive? Was it the game? Was it the game played? Or was it the atmosphere in the crowd? I was like, take your pick. Hey, what well, the atmosphere was just awesome. You, you and I talked about it last night. Seeing that place full again. You know, uh, the seventh inning stretch, I got goosebumps during the seventh inning stretch when, uh, during the hog call. It was loud. I haven't heard one that loud in a long time. And, uh, boy, I've been missing it. And I think the players kind of fed off of that, too. You can see the energy on the field. Just, uh, I don't know, just all night. It was just a great night, a big win for the hogs. And uh, hopefully this rain will move out here so we can get a game in today. I feel like Caden Wallace was a little bit of your spirit animal last night. I mean, you pretty much were, were talking him through the at-bat with the home run in the fifth inning and, and almost the same thing in the eighth. Um, you know, you're a cerebral. You, I know you were a cerebral hitter when you played. I think you coached that way. And it really seems to me in the way when we talked with Caden about it after the game and the post postgame, um, he's a really smart hitter. Aside from the fact that he's got an incredibly quick bat, very strong, and very athletic. I just think he's a really intelligent hitter, too. Oh, he is, Phil. I tell you, you know, for a freshman to be able to give up, you know, we're we're taught to hunt the fastball. Hitters are taught to hunt the fastball. But, you know, when you're a three-hole hitter and the number one team in the nation, you're, and there's certain situations, you're not going to get a fastball. So you, you, have to, you have to understand what the pitcher's trying to do to you. Um, but then at the same time, you don't want to give up your strength. But you know, there's certain times where you you go up there and you you have to sit on a certain pitch, and and he's really good at doing it. And I I'll, I'll tell you, as a freshman, I couldn't do that. I I wasn't that good at looking for a specific pitch. I would look off speed, and the guy would throw a fastball, and I'd still try to catch up. And you can't do that. You've got to be you've got to pick a speed and stay with it. Now you can you can look dead red fastball, and if they hang a breaking ball, you're ready to hit it. You can still hit it, but you can't do the flip side of it. So. But he's uh, just to watch him as a freshman, his approach. Uh, I mean, it's just an advanced approach. And, you know, I've said it before. I've, I was fortunate enough to watch Caden kind of grow up playing baseball uh, around tournaments and stuff during the summers. And uh, he's always been a hitter. And uh, he's a smart kid. And he really understands what that pitcher's trying to do. And then he understands his swing also and how to get on plane with that pitch and, and drive the ball. You know, one thing that stood out yesterday, and this has come uh, this has come. Uh, right in front of our eyes, really, in the last month and a half, two months. The roles on the team are, are I, I don't know if I'd say like set in stone, but everybody um, buys into their role. If it's, a, if it's a Charlie Welch who's now a pinch hitter and always comes ready to hit off the bench, if it's a Jacob Nesbitt who comes in as a pinch runner and a, and a late-inning fielding replacement and makes a great play in the field yesterday, or a Braden Webb who was your cleanup hitter the first game of the year and now is a late-inning fielding replacement, and when he got a start against uh, against Tennessee this last week, it's home run and plays a great game, but when he goes in late, he makes great plays in the field when you need him there. You know, and all of these little pieces there, you would say, well, they're bit rolls. But it all leads to a reason why this team has won 80% of their games, because everybody buys into their role and takes pride in it. Well, you're right, Phil, but don't you think that starts with BVH at the top? Because that's the one thing I notice in him every year. He he has kind of a, a – he's able to instill in these guys a team-first mentality. And – you know, a lot of a lot of coaches can't do that. You look at, to me, I you know, and I talk about Ole Miss all the time. To me, an Ole Miss team is a me, me, me team. Look at me. Look what I did. Where the Razorbacks, it's it's more of a team a team mentality. Look at Nesbitt last night. You know, he's a guy that started for two years. He's been a big part of the lineup, and then you know, last night he comes in late in and makes an unbelievable play. And you know, that's huge at that point. You know, it was a, it, that was the that would have put the tie and run at the plate at the time when he made that play. And uh, Peyton Webb comes off the bench, uh, hits a double down the left field line, they walk good hard, and then Caden Wallace hits a three-run jack, all with two outs. And so 
everyone, they just really buy into it. And I think that's a, that's a testament to Dave Van Horn and the staff to really get the guys to buy into to that team first mentality. And boy, teams that play like that, they're really hard to beat. All right, now I, I got to ask you, and we got we got into some other stuff involving baseball. We'll we'll get into the Arkansas Razorback series with Florida later tonight. Hopefully, they'll they'll be a game. Um, you, I don't know if you heard this, but you and I talked about it off the air yesterday. Caden Wallace's two home runs went just inside those big yellow poles. They are fair poles, and Kyle Peterson referred to one of them as a fair pole on the SEC Network last night. What do you have to say about that? I think I'm really disappointed in Kyle Peterson, um, and uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to send a text and find out what was going on because that's that's really disappointing. Um, I even heard one of the reporters ask Dave after the game. They called it a pole. Also, it sounded just like you asking uh, about the ball going over the pole. And I just want to say, guys, it's a foul pole. It's been a foul pole. It's always going to be a foul pole. I feel like you and you and Kyle Peterson, you guys, you guys set that up Tuesday in your interview, though. I think y'all must have talked about it off the air or something. I've never heard him call it that, um, so I, I got to find out what's going on. I'm gonna I'm gonna dig into that a little bit deeper for you. I'll send you photos of a t- of any text chain I've got with Kyle you know, to prove. I and I have nothing that he needs, so that's for that's for sure. <laughs> and I had you know it's Sterling Sterling for the Yankees. Your Yankees get a no hitter from Corey Kluber on Tuesday. I know you had to be pretty fired up about that, but I heard Sterling say the Yankee radio voice say no the word no hitter like fifty eight million times during the three innings I heard him. So I feel bubbled like this is a great week for me as far as the things we <laughs> battle about. Pretty soon I'm mean, going to hear somebody say uh, striking out the side is just three strikeouts in one inning, even if you give up 80 runs. I can't wait until that happens. <laughs> you know, there's just some things, Phil, you and I are going to have to agree to disagree on. So so here, here's the scenario. A guy, let's say he hits the first batter, walks the next batter, gives up a double, walks the next two, gives up a three-run jack, strikes out a couple guys, ends up striking out three in the inning. You you just you can't reward that guy by saying you struck out the side. Even though he struck out three batters, he didn't strike out the side. He struck out three, but he gave up four runs. Um, I don't know. I just uh, I just don't see it. I'm sorry. You can try to change my mind, but I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, we do the change my mind segment on Wednesdays, but then again, every time you and I are in a radio booth, it turns into change my mind. So I just don't think that'll ever happen. Um, next thing, and I did a whole segment about this on Wednesday. Uh, the, why can't anybody hit in Major League Baseball anymore? Here's the crazy thing about this, Bubba. You know, you, you, you're at a point now where, and who knows if this holds out because it's a small sample. Now you got another four and a half months of the season left. But if the stats hold, there will be fewer base hits per game on average since 1908. The crazy thing about this, Bubba, is I still feel like Major League hitters know how to hit. Like they know how to hit. They're just taking a totally different approach. And, of course, the pitchers are throwing harder than ever. Pitching technology is ahead of hitters. I don't know, but it just it creates a game that's, for me, a little tougher to watch. What do you think? Oh, I agree. It's not, it's not fun to watch that. Watch, you know, strikeouts, strikeout after strikeout. Um, now, I will say that, you know, pitching technology has come a long way. And I, I still say there's a little sticky substance they're putting on the ball that, mm-hmm. you know, everyone knows everyone's doing it. Look at the Astros. You get a guy going to the Astros, his spin rate goes up, you know, ridiculously on his fastball. Well, that just doesn't happen. You know, you can look at Verlander and look at some of the guys. They're putting something on the ball to make that ball. And we talked about perceived the vert- uh, vertical break on the on the fastball. Um, it, it's causing the ball to stay on plane more, but. At the same time, as a hitter, I think the home runs pay. I mean, they pay. You go, you you take your numbers into arbitration, and home runs you get paid for home runs. Mm-hmm. They don't look at the strikeouts, unfortunately. And I think guys just uh, they're really going up to the plate. I, I'll tell you what, I'll use I'll use Caden Wallace last night, Phil. You and I talked about it on the air. Caden Wallace got jammed with a fastball. Did a really good job of just getting his hands inside of it. He dribbled it down the third baseline with two strikes. Got on for a base hit. Um, in the big leagues, that wouldn't have happened. He'd have taken a big, giant hack, swung underneath it, and struck out. Um, the slider he set on and hit it over the foul pole, at the, the foul pole down the left field line, um, he set on that pitch. You know, and, and I just feel like in Major League Baseball right now, there's not 
there's not the fundamentals of hitting are kind of going out the door. Um, now, pitchers are really good, but the key to hitting is getting on plane with a pitch. And I don't know. I don't know if there's that much attention to that anymore. It's all about how far can I hit this ball. Um, but it's, it's crazy, and it's kind of sad. If that stat holds up that you just read off about the, since 1908, it's, it's a sad day for Major League Baseball. You know what the, the thing is, though, and that you and I both also are very interested in the distance that balls are hit, in the velocity that comes off of a guy's bat. So, you know, you and I both will will criticize this style of baseball, but at the same time, we still get excited about a lot of these analytics in which, you know, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to hit the ball as hard as possible and as far as possible, and it's still, it, it still does get our interest in some ways. It, it does, and, and I'm the first one to... The, I can't wait for them to send me the, the exit below on a home run, you know, or a line drive in the right center gap. But what really gets me excited still is a guy like Caden Wallace yesterday. They, they had thrown him like nine consecutive sliders. And, you know, we said when he came up, or I said when he came up to the plate, his third at bat, I said, I bet you they try to sneak a fastball by him. Well, he, he, they, they actually made a really good pitch down and away, and he drove it to right field over the right field fence, um, just to the left of the foul pole. Um, you notice how I always get foul pole in there for you? I didn't hear that word. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what impresses me. Guys that can do that. Anyone can pull a ball to the pull side over the fence, but real hitters can take that pitch down and away and still drive that ball, stay behind it and drive it to the opposite field. Those are the ones that really impress me. Now, we get excited when someone hits one over the scoreboard and it's 114 miles an hour off the bat. Yeah, we get excited about that, but... I love the game within the game, and it's that pitcher on the mound trying to get you out, and it's it's uh, that's the part of it that gets me excited is is watching that one on one matchup, and 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 I love it when the hitter comes through like last night. Caden Wallace wins that battle a couple times; it really pumps me up. All right, last thing, and then we got to go. All right, so you you handed your bat to a fan yesterday through the window. <laughs> when I touch the bat, I get looked at like I just. I don't know, said something nasty about your, your wife or something. Um, you handed a fan your bat. What do I need to do to get on that list? Well, look, we, we've come a long way. We got rid of our little germ guard thing there in between us, you know, so you're officially in my germ circle now. But you, you, you can't grab the bat yet. Now, the guy I gave the bat to is Josh Plummer. He's, a, he's an ex-Razorback, so he earned the right you know, to, to hold the bat. But you're, you're not quite there yet. You, you've come a long way, though, Phil. I tell you what, if we get to Omaha, um, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you hold the bat, I guess. Okay. But until then, uh, you know, we still got a long way to go. We still got some other issues to work through. The whole foul pole, yellow pole, fair, fair line, foul line. All, we, there's a lot of stuff we got to work through before uh, you earn the bat, I think. We have more than that to work through, Bubba. And just keep in mind, <laughs> that bat is in the radio booth right now. I'm going to be there a couple hours before you. I hope that might make you a little bit nervous. I'll see you later oh, on today, my friend. Have a great day. All right. Good talking to you, Phil. Go on. This is Bubba Carpenter. He'll be with me later on tonight, 630 airtime on uh, three out of these four stations. We're brought to you by The Fence Man. It's the company you can trust when it comes to building your next fence. They build new gates, custom-built new gates for an existing fence. Whole process is easy, quick, most importantly, it's affordable. 18 month, same as cash financing is available right now at the Fence Man. If you need a new fence, gates, anything that involves a fence, call the Fence Man, 479 782 3936. 479 782 3936 for the Fence Man. He ain't afraid of no work. After the break, we wrap the show up. We got a Duma of the Week, or maybe even two. And we got some texts to get through. And wish you a great weekend right after this.